The Shanbei, Chinese, Xianbei, Pinyin, Shanbei, Wei Giles, Xian Pai, were originally a nomadic people residing in what is today's eastern Mongolia, Inner Mongolia, and northeast China. Along with the Xiongnu, they were one of the major nomadic groups in northern China from the Han Dynasty to the Northern and Southern Dynasties. They eventually established their own northern dynasties such as the Northern Wei founded in the 4th century AD by the Tuba clan. Language It is widely theorized that the Shanbei spoke a language related to the Mongolic languages. Klaus Shanig writes, the Shanbei derived from the context of the Donghu, who are likely to have contained the linguistic ancestors of the Mongols. Later branches and descendants of the Shanbei include the Tabgok and Khitan, who seem to have been linguistically paramongolic. Opinions differ widely as to what the linguistic impact of the Shanbei period was. Some scholars, like Clausen, have preferred to regard the Shanbei and Tabgok Tuba as Turks, or even as Bulgar Turks, with the implication that the entire layer of early Turkic borrowings in Mongolic would have been received from the Shanbei, rather than from the Xiongnu. However, since the Mongolic, or Paramongolic, identity of the Shanbei is increasingly obvious in the light of recent progress in Khitan studies, it is more reasonable to assume, with Dorfer, that the flow of linguistic influence from Turkic, or Bulgar Turkic, into Mongolic was at least partly reversed during the Shanbei period, yielding the first identifiable layer of Mongolic, or Paramongolic, loanwords in Turkic. It is also possible that the Shanbei spoke more than one language. History Chinese historical texts unequivocally state that the Shanbei were descendants of the earlier Donghu, the Eastern Hu, based on Chinese records. Qin Han era After the Donghu were defeated by Modu Chanyu around 208 BC, the Donghu splintered into the Shanbei and Wuhan. The Book of the Later Han says that the language and culture of the Shanbei are the same as the Wuhan. The records of the Three Kingdoms say, Tanshawai of the Shanbei divided his territory into three sections, the eastern, the middle and the western. From the Yu-Biping to the Liao River, connecting the Fuyu and Mo to the east, it was the eastern section. There were more than 20 counties. The Darans, chiefs, of this section, were called Mihia, Kweji, Suli and Huido. From the Yu-Biping to Shanggu to the west, it was the middle section. There were more than ten counties. The Darans of this section were called Kezui, Kweja, Morong, et al. From Shanggu to Dunhuang, connecting the Wusun to the west, it was the western section. There were more than twenty counties. The Darans of this section were called Jijian Luoluo, Railu Tuyan, Yanlayu, et al. These chiefs were all subordinate to Tanshawai. The Book of the Later Han records a memorial submitted in 177. Ever since the northern Zongnu ran away, the Shanbei have become powerful and populous, taking all the lands previously held by the Shangnu and claiming to have 100,000 warriors. Refined metals and wrought iron have come into the possession of the Shanbei rebels. Han deserters also seek refuge in the lands of the Shanbei and serve as their advisors. Their weapons are sharper and their horses are faster than those of the Shangnu. Another memorial submitted in 185 is recorded by the Book of the Later Han. The Shanbei people invade our frontiers so frequently that hardly a year goes by in peace, and it is only when the trading season arrives that they come forward in submission. But in so doing they are only bent on gaining precious Chinese goods, it is not because they respect Chinese power or are grateful for Chinese generosity. As soon as they obtain all they possibly can from trade, they turn in their tracks to start wreaking damage. Around AD 155, the northern Zongnu were crushed and subjugated by the Shanbei. Their chief, known by the Chinese as Tan Shi Wai, then advanced upon and defeated the Wusun of the Ili by AD 166. He then formed an allegiance with the southern Zongnu to attack Shenxi and Kansu. China successfully repulsed their attacks in 158, 177 and 279. Between AD 155 and 166, Tan Shi Wai conducted a series of major military campaigns that led to the extension of Xian Pai power over the Great Steppe as far as southern Siberia and from Usuri to the Caspian Sea. 
Until the third decade of the 3rd century AD the Xian Pai was the leading power in Central Asia. Early state formation, Sixteen Kingdoms and the Northern Way the 3rd century saw both the fragmentation of the Shanbei in 235 and the branching out of the various Shanbei tribes later to establish six significant empires of their own such as the former Yan 281-370, Western Yan 384-394, later Yan 384-407, Southern Yan 398-410, Western Qin 385-430, and Southern Liang 397-440. 14. Most of them were unified by the Tuba Shanbei, who established the Northern Way 386 to 535, which was the first of the Northern Dynasties 386 to 581 founded by the Shanbei. In 534, the Northern Way split into an Eastern Way 534 to 550, and a Western Way 535 to 556, after an uprising in the steppes of North China inhabited by Shanbei and other nomadic peoples. The former evolved into the Northern Qi 550 to 577, and the latter into the Northern Zhou 557 to 581, while the Southern dynasties were pushed to the south of the Yangtze River. In 581, the prime minister of Northern Zhou, Yang Jian, founded the Sui dynasty 581 His son, the future emperor Yang of Sui, annihilated the southern Chen 557 the last kingdom of the southern dynasties, thereby unifying northern and southern China. After the Sui came to an end amidst peasant rebellions and renegade troops, his cousin, Li Yuan, founded the Tang Dynasty 618 Li led China to develop into one of the most prosperous states in history. Sui and Tang Dynasties were founded by Han Chinese generals who also served the Northern Wei Dynasty. Through these political establishments, the Shanbei who entered China were largely merged with the Han, examples such as the wife of Emperor Gozu of Tang, Duchess Dou and Emperor Taizong of Tang's Li Shimin's wife, Empress Zongsun, both have Shanbei ancestries, while those who remained behind in the northern grassland emerged as later powers to rule over China. Art Art of the Shanbei portrayed their nomadic lifestyle and consisted primarily of metalwork and figurines. The style and subjects of Shanbei art were influenced by a variety of influences, and ultimately, the Shanbei were known for emphasizing unique nomadic motifs in artistic advancements such as leaf headdresses, crouching and geometricized animals' depictions, animal pendant necklaces, and metal openwork. Leaf headdresses the leaf headdresses were very characteristic of Shanbei culture, and they are found especially in Morong Shanbei tombs. Their corresponding ornamental style also links the Shanbei to Bactria. These gold hat ornaments represented trees and antlers and, in Chinese, they are referred to as buyao step sway, since the thin metal leaves move when the wearer moves. Sun Guoping first uncovered this type of artifact, and defined three main styles, blossoming tree, washu, which is mounted on the front of a cap near the forehead and has one or more branches with hanging leaves that are circle or droplet shaped, blossoming top, dinghua, which is worn on top of the head and resembles a tree or animal with many leaf pendants, and the rare, blossoming vine, huaman, which consists of gold strips interwoven with wires with leaves, leaf headdresses were made with hammered gold and decorated by punching out designs and hanging the leaf pendants with wire. The exact origin, use, and wear of these headdresses is still being investigated and determined. However, headdresses similar to those later also existed and were worn by women in the courts. Animal iconography Another key form of Shanbei art is animal iconography, which was implemented primarily in metalwork. The Shanbei stylistically portrayed crouching animals in geometricized, abstracted, repeated forms, and distinguished their culture and art by depicting animal predation and same animal combat. Typically, sheep, deer, and horses were illustrated. The artifacts, usually plaques or pendants, were made from metal, and the backgrounds were decorated with openwork or mountainous landscapes, which harks back to the Shanbei nomadic lifestyle. With repeated animal imagery, an openwork background, and a rectangular frame, the included image of the three-deer plaque is a paradigm of the Shanbei art style. 
Concave plaque backings imply that plaques were made using lost wax casting, or raised designs were impressed on the back of hammered metal sheets. Horses The nomadic traditions of the Shanbei inspired them to portray horses in their artwork. The horse played a large role in the existence of the Shanbei as a nomadic people, and in one tomb, a horse skull lay atop Shanbei bells, buckles, ornaments, a saddle, and one gilded bronze stirrup. The Shanbei not only created art for their horses, but they also made art to depict horses. Another recurring motif was the winged horse. It has been suggested by archaeologist Su Bai that this symbol was a heavenly beast in the shape of a horse because of its prominence in Shanbei mythology. This symbol is thought to have guided an early Shanbei southern migration, and is a recurring image in many Shanbei art forms. Figurines Shanbei figurines help to portray the people of the society by representing pastimes, depicting specialized clothing, and implying various beliefs. Most figurines have been recovered from Shanbei tombs, so they are primarily military and musical figures meant to serve the deceased in afterlife processions and guard the tomb. Furthermore, the figurine clothing specifies the according social statuses. Higher ranking Shanbei wore long sleeved robes with a straight neck shirt underneath, while lower ranking Shanbei wore trousers and belted tunics. Buddhist influences Shanbei Buddhist influences were derived from interactions with Han culture. The Han bureaucrats initially helped the Shanbei run their state, but eventually the Shanbei became cinephiles and promoted Buddhism. The beginning of this conversion is evidenced by the Buddha imagery that emerges in Shanbei art. For instance, the included Buddha imprinted leaf headdress perfectly represents the Shanbei conversion and Buddhist synthesis since it combines both the traditional nomadic Shanbei leaf headdress with the new imagery of Buddha. This Shanbei religious conversion continued to develop in the Northern Wei dynasty, and ultimately led to the creation of the Yungang Grottoes. Modern descendants Most Shanbei clans adopted Han family names during Northern Wei dynasty. Below is a list of the Shanbei clans that are known to have been changed into Han family names. The Northern Wei's eight noble Shanbei surnames Ba Da Gui Zhu were the Buliugu Bu Lu Gu, Hele He Lai, Dugu Dugu, Helo He Lu, Haniu Hu Niu, Chumu Chu Mu, Gexi He Shi, and Yuchi Wei Kai. The Monger two people in modern China may have descended from the Shanbei who were led by Tuyuhun Khan to migrate westward and establish the Tuyuhun Kingdom 284 to 670 in the 3rd century and Western Xia 1038 to 1227 through the 13th century. Today they are primarily distributed in Qinghai and Gansu province and speak a Mongolic language. The Xibe or Zibo People also believe they are descendants of the Shanbei, with considerable controversies that have attributed their origins to the Yurchins, the Elenchen, and the Shanbei. Shanbei descendants among the Korean population carry surnames such as Mo Mo Chinese, Mu Pinyin, Mu, Wade Giles, Mu, shortened from Morong, Sok Sok Sek Seog Chinese, Shi Pinyin, Shi, Wade Giles, Shi, shortened from Wushilan Wu Shi Lan, 111 Chinese, Yuan Pinyin, Yuan, Wade Giles, Yuan, the adopted Chinese surname of the Tuba, Dokgo Dago Chinese, Dugu Pinyin, Dugu, Wade Giles, Tuku from Dugu. See also Change of Shanbei names to Han names, Kebaneng, List of Mongolian monarchs, Northern Wei Dynasty, Shanbei State 16 kingdoms Tribes in Chinese history Wu Hu Wuwan Chinese sovereign Bu Dugan Hanshu Sangwazi References Bibliography Yuha Yan Hunan, the 27th of January 2006. The Mongolic Languages. Routledge, p. 393.
ISBN 978-1-135-79690-7. External links Xi'an Bei Yu Yan The Shanbei Language Chinese Traditional Big Five Code Page via Internet Archive